All right, welcome back, everyone. Today we are going to be talking about Charmcaster, book three in the Spellslinger series by Sebastian de Castell. Um, just so everyone knows beforehand, I mean, I'm going to go into spoilers with this one. I usually try to avoid spoilers for my first books of series, but I generally need to talk about uh, most of what goes on to kind of actually give a full review of the story. So if you read the first two and you like them, I would say keep going um, and just let me know what you think about them and then come back and watch this after you're done. So let's go into some positives first. Um, I really enjoy getting to explore new parts of the world and culture uh, in these books. I think that's really interesting. Like it seems like each book kind of takes a piece of the world and really dives into what those people believe. And we get a little bit of um, additional pieces here and there, just little hints about what other cultures are. But we get a big look, picture look at some of these um, other places in the world. I really like the uh, mechanism, invention, kind of culture that Catabria has. Uh, I think it kind of highlights that each of these nations, the Seven Sands, uh, you know, Kellen's people, stuff like that, the uh, that they each kind of have their own strengths and weaknesses and, and things that, like, their cultures are based around this kind of one principle, like the um, Kellen's, Kellen's mage people. I can't think of their name right now. Uh, the Jantep. There we go. Uh, you know, they have their, you know, their base in magic heavily. And so they rely on that almost exclusively and their culture is built around that. Um, I think that Sebastian does a really good job with developing those parts of the world in his books. Um, I do like that. It seems like he is bringing back characters from previous books. Uh, so, um, the big one being, uh, Nefenia gets to come back. Um, and it's interesting to see how she's changed off screen and how it, Kellen interacts with her now that she's a bit, um, you know, a bit more hardened by the world that has kind of turned against her. Uh, super into getting more backstory on Farius. I think that's really was needed for this book, especially, um, because she's a very interesting character and hopefully is going to be important moving forward in the story. Um, especially as Kellen's teacher, but I like that we get to meet her parents, adopted parents and kind of learn a little bit about how they brought her up and how she was when she was younger uh, and like around Kellen's age and stuff like that. And we kind of get to see that, you know, Kellen and Farius are going to be on ver two different paths. And uh, by the end of this book, um, Kellen kind of goes off on his own. So we'll see where Farius comes in in the next couple books. But uh, I'm really interested to see that journey uh, change and kind of maybe them interweave in between each other's stories as, you know, their paths connect in certain ways. Um, talking about him striking on his own, I think this is a good really good character moment of him actually having to make a difficult choice of I really want to stay with my friends but I shouldn't because I have stuff I need to do and I'm endangering them by staying here and not doing what needs to be done um I hope there's more choices like that and we get a little bit more um development of of those and Kellen making these hard you know hard line choices especially like I feel like his people have been brought up a lot and I'm interested to see where like their dynamic goes between like his people and, and him and how he has to navigate the world based on 
what they're trying to do and what he um and how he you know messes that up for them so let's go into some criticisms um i mean these books are pretty short but uh i am starting to feel like i'm a, i'm a little concerned by this point in the story that we haven't gotten to learn more about Kellen Shadow Black since it's basically the plot point driving the entire narrative. Um, like, we don't know why his grandma gave it to him. We don't know really anything about it in this book. And considering this is a third of a six book series and we don't know anything yet about the basically core story, I'm a little worried. Um, to me, it's starting to feel like an adventure of the week book type series where it's like, oh, they go to a new place and they have an adventure, but it doesn't progress the overall story. It just progresses like that specific area. And there's not a whole lot to, you know, there, there's a few small things that change. But there's not a, like these big changes that, you know, weave and change how how the story progresses moving forward. Um, I like the introduction of the Castrodazi coins. I think that it's really cool to see all these kind of weird magic systems come together within Kellen and all these different like, I wouldn't even say just magic systems, but all these different like pieces of culture kind of like warp their way in just because he's traveling around and he's le and he's picking up what he can um i'm just i'm a little nervous because and i think i've listened to sebastian say this in an interview i've i think i've watched like one interview with him or I, maybe it's something i read where he doesn't like to go into deep into magic systems and that's concerning me um, because I feel like with all these intricate systems in place, uh, without them being fully explained, it's, it, it kind of feels like Kellen's stuff, his magic, his tricks that he has always seem to work out perfectly in his favor in the moment of crisis. And like, yeah, there's always the oh, this one failed and this one failed, but there, there's always that one that just, like, succeeds, but I don't feel like there's enough set up to where I'm satisfied that it succeeds, where there's not like this, this is how this works, and this is how it's been developed. And, oh, wow, this is exactly the perfect situation. Like, he, he puts himself in the situation to use it properly, or, like, you know, it's just kind of always, like, it, it feels like he just tries to blast his way through stuff. And, you know, chance, you know, happens and he has the tools for the situation. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's, maybe it's just a personal thing and maybe people will comment down below and say that's just a me thing. Um, but I, I like my magic systems to have some hard rules to them, especially when like they're like, I would be more okay with a very loose magic system if it was something like, Lord of the Rings, where it's just one system of magic. Um, and maybe there's pieces inside that, but there's like, we've got the Shadow Black, we've got the Jantep magic, we've got the Castrodazi coins. It's like, we've got all these different systems at play. How do they each work? Because if we don't know, then then what's the difference between them? Like, why can't why can't Jantep mages use Castrodazi coins besides them being rare? Um overall i would say book three of the series i would say that i'm a i don't dislike it i don't want people to go away with that, that opinion that is like oh wow he really hates this book that's not at all the case um i've read a lot of books this is nowhere near the the bottom but to me i'm just a little disappointed because the first book was i really enjoyed the first book a lot and it gave me very much like vibes of uh, Cradle, which is up there in my um, 
most books now, but uh, it's slowly moving down my list. And it's not that it's bad. The writing itself is good. Um, but I don't feel like the plot is the like the overall series plot is there. I feel like it's more of like a, as I said kind of earlier, it's more of an adventure of the week book rather than a intricate series. And I, I'm more of a fan of like each of these kind of really snowballing on top of each other and building this complex story that these characters change and develop in crazy ways that like are very detailed and in depth and you know are super interesting but that's also just me you know i really like stories like that so um i'm still gonna finish this series i think it's um i think it's pretty good but i'll see what i think after the next couple books um maybe this is just the couple week books and it'll change my opinion as i get along but I'm finishing out the series regardless, so uh, I'll get those reviews up in the next coming weeks, and we'll see uh, what uh, what I think from there. So thanks, everyone, uh, for watching up to this point. I really appreciate it. Um, if you did like the video, please leave a like. It really helps out the channel, and it lets us be seen by other people. Um, if you do want to talk about this book, if you read this book, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, or if you're interested in it or if like like what do you think that do you like the the style that Sebastian goes for and and how the book series is playing out so far so uh, that's gonna be it for this one so thank you for watching